And we thank God for the ability to be able to stream into everybody's home the divine liturgy. Because most of the time, we all receive into our homes things that are not that good for us. Hollywood has been flooding us with all kinds of things that are filled with sexual innuendos or sexual pictures, um, immoral ways of living, violence, all kinds of things. And now we have the divine liturgy coming into our homes. What a blessing. What a blessing. At the same time, of course, <clears throat> we're being prevented from coming to church. We're being prevented from receiving Holy Communion. And I'm thinking about this. I've been thinking about this. I'm wondering, why is God allowing such a thing? Doesn't He want us to receive Holy Communion? Doesn't He want us to be in church? Well, the coronavirus has become something like what St. Mary of Egypt experienced in her own life. She went to church, but she was unworthy. She was unworthy to be in the presence of God. And God did not allow her to enter. He put something like a force field at the door of the church, forbidding her from entering. And I'm looking at that story and I'm saying, what have we done, maybe, that he's putting this force field called coronavirus in our way so that we may not be able to enter the church? As a whole, the entire world, not just one country, not just one particular parish, but the whole world. What is it that we have done wrong? Or what is it that we haven't done good? And we need to, each one of us, consider why it is for me. Why it is that I cannot do this. Why it is that I'm not allowed to do this. Why is this force field? put in front of me. Don't look, about the, don't look at the others. Don't consider what the others have done. Each one has to consider what each one of us has done. This is a time. We have plenty of time. Businesses are closed. People are staying home. Um, we can't even get out of the homes. We're not allowed to come out of the homes with the new uh, requirements. And in uh, some places, there are people, there are police, monitoring the streets and giving um, penalties and, and punishing people for coming out of their homes. What is it that we have done that this forest field has been put in our way, preventing us from entering the church, preventing us from receiving Holy Communion? Well, this is Great Lent. And Great Lent is a time for us to consider exactly that question. So this Great Lent is I think the best that I have seen in my lifetime. Because it has really become for us a real Lent, a real time to consider our situation, our condition as human beings, as Christians, in our relationships with other people, in the way we treat others, in the way we behave toward others, in the way we behave toward material things in the way we behave toward hedon hedonism, toward enjoyments, what we think enjoyments which we deserve. And we need to reconsider what we do in our lives. Well, that's what happened with Mary of Egypt. She stood in front of the door. She tried three times to enter the Holy Sepulchre building, the other pilgrims were entering and she couldn't go in. She had come from a life of debauchery. She loved sex and she ran around and she did as much as she could to enjoy what she thought was good. She loved men and God stopped her and said, look, 
the flesh is not the only thing to consider in your life. You also have a soul. You need to consider your soul and make sure that it's saved forever. Your flesh is going to die eventually, it's going to be buried, it's going to dissolve in the earth, but your soul is going to remain immortal. And that's what you need to consider. And Mary of Egypt stood in front of the gate entering the Holy Sepulchre and she cried. She knelt down and beseeched God to forgive her for whatever she was doing. And then the force field was removed and she was able to enter. After that, she realized that her soul was the most important aspect of her being. Because the body would dissolve and would disappear, but the soul would remain. And she left, went into the desert. She imposed on herself absence from church and absence from communion. Because she realized that what she needed to do was to correct her soul through prayer. So this is the time for us to do the same thing. It took her 45 years to do this. We're not going to have to wait that long, I hope. I hope that in a few months, or even less, we may be able to come back to church and Holy Communion would be ready for us. But we who have gone through this process of purification and of reconsideration of our lives, just like she did in the desert for 45 years. And then we'll be able to approach Holy Communion with a new understanding, with a new perspective, with a new desire for it. Because you know, when, when we take things for granted and we just come to church and we think that we deserve Holy Communion, therefore we just walk up and we take it even if we were partying the previous night or we were never prayed even five minutes. We walk into church at the end of the service and we run up to receive Holy Communion. We walk into the church without considering what this place is about. Now is time, this is the time to re-value, to put new value to what it is to be in church, to what it is to receive Holy Communion. So this is not bad for us. Yes, the coronavirus is bad for us, especially if we get sick, and especially if somebody dies that is close to us. It can be very bad. But this can also be very good if we understand this better, being forced the way we are to reconsider our lives, to think about what is happening to us very seriously. So, the liturgy has been streamed into our homes. Blessings and prayers enter into our homes like never before. I mean, there are so many people that never invited even a priest to come and bless their home. Okay? Or they can't have a priest come and bless their home for whatever reason. And now, the Divine Liturgy has been streamed into our homes. The prayers that are said come to us in a way which is amazing. Somebody wrote to me, I get a lot of emails from parishioners and people from around the world thanking us for this, the, the live streams. And yesterday I got an email from somebody, a parishioner, who said to me, this is an icon. This is like an icon. I would say this is a living icon of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is streamed into our homes as a living icon to take us closer to Him, to take us closer to God, to transform us. This time is a blessed one in so many different ways. And we need to thank God for it as well. Amen.